Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking farming because I looked at my old auto farming tutorial and realized how bad it was. So in the spirit of doing things properly, this is going to be a two-part series. The first part is how to farm, which is going to cover the very basics of farming and how all the equipment works. And the second video will be how to auto farm, which will be me building step by step a fully automated farm for you guys to see. All right, I'm going to shut up and carry on. The first thing you're going to need to know about farming is you need a bucket, some dirt and some seeds. Um, a bucket like this is used to carry water. Seeds are found all over the place, like so. This little pond is right by the start and has instructions on how to farm, but I'm going to be doing a much more in-depth tutorial on that today. You will need to gather up this, the fertilized dirt, which also comes in bags that looks like this. And this is actual fertilizer, which you can spray on your crop later on. To begin with, only plant carrots, beets and tomatoes. They are your low value crops that are not going to cause a problem. All of these other level 2 and level 3 crops will draw a lot more angry mobs your way and are a lot harder to deal with at the beginning of the game. And because of the raids that will attack your crops at midnight, don't build your first farm too big. The raid will only happen if you have 10 crops or more. So I tend to build my farm only 8 big, then I guarantee I will never get attacked. That way it makes farming much easier to start the game. Beautiful 8 plot farm. I find this farm will produce twice as much food as I need. So every day I farm, I make two days of food. It's a pretty good system considering it doesn't draw any attention. Once you've got your dirt down, it's simply a case of planting your seeds and using your bucket to add in some water. You can fill your bucket at the pond and water each crop like so. Now in a little less than 24 hours, I think it's around 20 hours, these crops will grow and you will be able to harvest them. So basically if you plant them at midnight, you will be able to harvest them, it's like 8 o'clock or something the following night. Um, it's not quite a full day to grow each crop, which means you can do one crop a day. The difference between them is pretty mild. A beet is going to give you half and half thirst and hunger, a carrot is going to give you mostly food, mostly hunger, and a tomato is going to give you mostly thirst. So I find personally for me I plant two or three carrots and the rest tomatoes and that gives me plenty of food. The best way to get seeds, fertilizer and soil is to just simply smash chests. In, there you are, in most of the chests you will find that sort of stuff. Fertilizer can be used to put on the crops. When you see those little pluses, that's how you know it's been fertilized. And that halves the grow time. So now I'll actually be able to grow two full crops in a day. So yes, you're right. At this point it's all pretty simple. Stick the seed in the ground and water. It's all pretty obvious. But it does get a little bit more interesting from this point onwards because you could choose to run up and down with your bucket which would take you forever to water your crop especially in time when they get bigger or you could try and you know figure out a watering system so the basic farming equipment is going to be a water cannon a vacuum pump and a water tank all of these things plus um, fertilized dirt um, are all craftable here at your crafting station and to start the game most importantly buckets and fertilized dirt. As you can see because I put fertilizer on the crop the carrot has now ripened and is ready to be harvested but the rest have not finished growing yet. So that's how fertilizer works. To get yourself unlimited water you're gonna need one vacuum pump, one water tank and one switch. That's it. 
So you stick the vacuum pump in the water like so with the water tank or chest on top of it and stick your switch close by. Connect your switch to your vacuum hopper and make sure the arrow is pointing up. So just push E so that it's going to suck the water in. And then all you have to do is turn on your switch. And now you have unlimited water. It's just going to sit here and keep filling up your tank. However, you'll notice once you've made some water and you try and use it to water your crops, you won't be able to. This water is only good for use in your crafting machine. To put it on your farm, you're going to need a water cannon. I've just stuck one up here as an example. So now if we connect our water tank, oh, we can't because these two buildings are not connected. You would have to connect the two structures in order for them to work, just like so. So now you'll be able to connect your water tank to your cannon. And I like to stick a button on to fire it. So now when we push the button, we dispense a water. And every time we do that, we'll dispense another water. And as long as our pump is on, it's going to automatically fill up the tank. So you'll never run out of water. However, as you'll see, this will only water one or two tiles directly below the cannon. So you can just build multiple cannons to cover your whole farm. Or you could do something like this. So I've just moved the water cannon to the side and I've put a sensor down instead of a button. So now if I connect the sensor with only one block of range to our water cannon and our water tank, like so, now when I approach them with my bucket, I get a bucket full of water. And it makes it much easier for you to water your whole farm with only one water cannon and water pump. Something to remember is only water tanks will connect to a water cannon. If you try and use a large chest or anything like that, it will fill up with water, but it will not connect to your water cannon. So you can only use chests for storage of water for your crafting, not for watering with your water cannon. For a simple farming tutorial, I hope you guys found this helpful. It should give you everything you need to get started. And just as a final tip guys, along the road all over the place are these flower stands. They're a great place to pick up all your farming supplies. You'll find fertilized dirt inside along with seeds and often fertilizer and pretty much everything you need. So if you spend a little bit of time traveling the roads, you will soon have all you need to set up a farm. If you travel down the road far enough, you will find your first processing plant. This is where you deliver all your farmed goods and pack them into crates. The reason that this is helpful is the trader is always directly behind. In that mountain through the cave there is where you'll find the trader always directly behind the first processing plant. As always, Thanks for watching guys, we will see you on the next video.